Hi, let's start by explaining how a barometer works. So what you see here, there's no funny business. When I do all of the stuff here today, everything will be legitimate. No tricks, no, um, what's the name of that TV show? Uh, Penn and Teller Fool Us. All I'm doing is jamming a rubber stopper in the bottom of this to turn this into basically just a, a container, right? Like a, a, a glass container like this beaker that I have. So it's just a large beaker. I'm filling it up with water. Uh, I'm not supposed to do this yet. What I'm supposed to do is show you another thing first. So let's go fill it up because I already started. Just not thinking. Hopefully it doesn't make you have to pee. About that full will be good enough. I'm going to leave this down inside of the aquarium for a moment. A little bit of it might spill, but when you're in class, I spill a lot more because I'm a spaz. Hey, not bad. I can live with that. Okay, this is what I was supposed to show you first, is another container, um, glass container, fill it with water all the way to the very top. And I'm going to take just a Petri dish here, a lid to a Petri dish. I'm wetting it just so that it makes a good seal with the container there and try to get all the air out. Okay. And now I'm going to hold this over the aquarium in case the Petri dish falls off of there. But when I turn this over and let go, you see the Petri dish stay suspended there on the bottom of our glass. And the reason for this is because the weight of the water inside of the glass is less pressure, exerting less force over that square area on the bottom than the air pressure in this room. Think about gases, liquids do this too. Think about gases, they don't just push downward. Gravity is what pulls down on the gas particles that make up our air, but then you know they get crowded together. So once they get crunched, they're pushing in all directions with each other, including they're pushing on the bottom of this Petri dish. And so the water stays inside, or the, the Petri just stays pushed against the bottom. And you know this, you've done this, maybe put your finger over a straw and had the, the water stay inside. Um, has to do with the air pressure, okay? So there's one. Now let's go to our barometer that we're making here. So back to this container, um, filling it. I know you can't see all the way to the top here because it's pretty tall. And fill it all the way to the top. I could do the same thing with the petri dish and it will stay. In fact, maybe we will do that for at least a moment. What I want to do is invert this down into my aquarium. So let's start with that. Okay, so even still with this taller column of water, the petri dish should stay. There it is, staying. Whoa, no, 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 no. You knew that was going to happen. Stay with me here. We're going to fill this all the way up again. Oh, use the beaker. The green is just food coloring added to the water so that we can see it better. Right. Try that again. This time I'll use my hand. Invert it down into the aquarium. And now when I take away my hand from the bottom of it, you can see that the column of water stays inside of here. Uh, if you listen to this, just so that you know that I'm not pressing it tightly against the bottom of the aquarium, I'm lifting it up off the bottom, just making sure that I keep the uh, glass tube uh, from going above the water surface because then it's going to spill out like it did as I drop the Petri dish off of there. So why does the water stay inside the column, the glass tube? So what we have is the weight of the water is pressing down, right? So it wants to fall down into the aquarium, but the aquarium has the uh, air pressure pushing down on the surface of it. And the amount of pressure that it exerts on all of the water molecules crowds them together inside the aquarium. And then they exert that same force, that same pressure on the water molecules inside the tube. So now the question is, how tall of a tube could I make here where the water will stay inside of it without falling down? And then once I go taller than that height, what will happen up inside that area? Now you'll notice that the top of mine, 
there's now a little bit of a gap there. That's not a vacuum. That's what the answer is going to be for that in just a moment. That right there is just a little bit of air because this glass tube uh, doesn't form a perfect seal with the rubber stopper that's there. But let's just pretend that I could make this glass tube um, like 30 feet tall. So go up through my ceiling, up through Mr. Whiteside's ceiling and be up about near where our roof level is, about 10 meters tall. That's when the weight of the water will be enough that it exerts an equal amount of pressure as the five miles of air or whatever you want to say there is really more than that but you know the air gets thinner and thinner as you go higher and higher that air pushing down exerts a pressure and this pushing down exerts a pressure and eventually they equalize out so now the uh, what happens when we go taller than that well the water level is going to drop down until the pressure exerted by that column of water equals the pressure of the air on the outside and what sits on top of that is a perfect vacuum and then what we can do with that perfect vacuum is we can uh, monitor it daily and see how it rises and falls. And that will tell us something about atmospheric pressure as well. So that's a barometer. That's how a barometer works. 